Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Sunbury Motors, North 4th Street in Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. And it's Tuesday, and under the category of it's been too long, ladies and gentlemen, we do bring in the outstanding Neil Kulong. Sir, welcome back after the hiatus. It is great to hear on the other end. It is great to be on the other end. And welcome back yourselves to the best day of the week that's not Friday, Saturday, and sometimes Sunday. <laughs> sometimes Sunday, depending on what time of the year it happens to be. Exactly. This is, or, yeah. or the record of a certain team. Yes, yes. Now, let's get to the record of running backs that don't have contracts. Josh Jacobs, Tony Pollard, Saquon Barkley. So where do we stand, in your opinion, Neil, when it comes to the value of the running back in today's game? Really, all of this boils down to the presence of the artificial instrument, uh, the franchise tag. Because right now, what that says is these guys are worth a little bit north of $10 million. However a team uses them, though, uh, is, is arbitrary to that. It's based, ironically, solely on the market. Now, when you have multiple um, comparables in terms of contract, nothing else, uh, determining the value of that artificial instrument, Actually, could have this. Now, it, what's interesting to me is that it, it's the whole thing for running backs is upside down, and to some degree, it's connected with the fact that for the quarterbacks, it's the most valuable uh, negotiating point that they'll have. So it's the opposite situation. People just say, "Well, get rid of the franchise tag." Franchise tag today benefits players more than it hurts them. I mean, I, I get long term. Um, the idea, if we accept the idea is to negotiate a long-term contract, the franchise tag helps more players than it hurts because it sets a floor. Uh, for the running backs, that floor is, is well below their peers. And at the end of the day, what this really indicates is touches are not valued at all. So the amount of carries that Josh Jacobs gets is not relevant um, even to his production. It's very easy for a team, especially at the value that it is, and at the value, if anything, it's gone down uh, in, in the, the years, really, since Adrian Peterson. That was kind of the end of, of the, the real dominant running back era. Uh, since then, you see far more players uh, it really un under a strategy of we draft him, we play him for maybe five years, we have a team option if he's a first-round guy, then we tag him. We're getting six years out of this player. Six years is a pretty reasonably long NFL career. People all yes. want players to play for 12, 13 seasons. That's not right. even, you know, it, it, statistically, it's not likely at all. So what the market is really saying, and we've seen this with several examples, especially recently, these players are not going to be worth very much after year five, year six. So bluntly, why is a team going to commit long-term dollars to them? The running backs are getting together, and last I saw is they have a, a, a group text going to discuss their options. I'm not sure what that means, but I would love right. to hear what they feel their options are. Um, at the end of the day, they are to some degree hamstrung by the tag, but the fact of the matter is there are just too many good ones coming into the NFL every year along with, I don't want to say a declining use of them because obviously they're they're used plenty. You know, Saquon Barkley gets the ball an awful lot. Um, yeah. it, it's it's a position that they're in, um, in how that's defined as far as the franchise tag is concerned. That lumps into a very specific category of players that are getting beaten up, uh, perhaps more than others, at the detriment of uh, their overall ability. You know, offensive linemen can get beat up and they can go still perform, by and large. Uh, running backs, if you're down a little bit, you're not going to be nearly as effective, and there's probably going to be somebody to, to come in and take your job. You look at Najee Harris in Pittsburgh. 
I, you, you've heard me talk about this for you know the full season and the off season. I don't think that there is a significant difference between Jalen Warren and Najee Harris. Jalen Warren right. was an undrafted rookie last year. Najee Harris right. was the 22nd overall pick in the draft. I, I don't think you can describe the problem any better than that. They're just too close. Whatever it is about Najee Harris that makes him 22 overall and Jalen Warren undrafted, for them to be as competitively close as they were only suggests that the, the skills of the high-end running backs are really not that much different than NFL-worthy uh, players that can come in and, and, and fill similar roles. That's going to decrease the value of, of uh, the monetary value of the position. It doesn't mean that they're not effective on the field. It doesn't mean that, that some of them are not really good players like the ones we're talking about. But the rest of it, just the rest of that market drags everybody else down. And I, I don't know if there's a way to reconcile that. Yeah, so let's talk about the analytics part of it, because analytics does enter into a lot of the thought process of management these days in various sports. Uh, for some odd reason, things like instinct and feel is being cast aside because numbers can are telling people what to do. Um, that's why the ones with instinct and feel win. I'll get back to you on that later. Uh, but the value of the running back position has been devalued in analytics. Why? If I was to put my finger on one answer, um, I, I would say it's rooted in efficiency. It doesn't take Bill Walsh to see that throwing the ball 18 yards down the field is more effective than running it for three. It's harder to break bigger runs. You get fewer chunk plays. And the, the way offenses are constructed now, uh, with the benefit of the rules and an obvious passive desire of the league uh, to ramp up scoring at all costs, more money is going in, in my opinion, uh, to, to two places that really kind of devalue the running back in general. One, your quarterback. I think that's that you know doesn't need to be said. It's obvious why they're right. they're getting paid the most. Absolutely. Two. Yep. It's your offensive coach. Yep. When you have Sean Payton pulling in twenty million dollars, and Sean Payton's a guy that utilizes um, a, a multifaceted running back who doesn't need to be uh, on the field all the time contributing. He certainly he's going to make hay out of Alvin Kamara, uh, but he can exist in an offense with a good quarterback that can move the ball around and let the system, in their words, kind of dictate everything. Um, that stands in the face of your point which I agree with. I, I don't think the running back is the problem. I think the running game is the, the issue at bay here. Um, yes. Effective offenses have running backs with 5.5 yards carry. They're not getting mm -hmm. the ball 25 times a game, but why do we need to find a running back as that? I hate to say this, especially around uh, potentially a Pittsburgh audience, because I know how much they love hearing this. Le'Veon Bell hit the nail on the head when he was discussing this. He is the top running back on the team, and he's the second best receiver on the team. Yep. So the idea of, of if he's getting the ball that much, if he's that prominent of a player in the offense, you're paying an offensive player. Does it matter what title he is in, in a fantasy football team? Does it matter where he's getting the ball as much? He's right. making plays. The offense is uh, largely, in, in the case of Bell in, in his heyday, it's largely as productive as it was because of how multifaceted he was. Um, that obviously didn't last, but I don't think that's really, I don't think that answers the problem either. Why can't you just give him a three year contract then? You know, I, last I heard, and maybe you have more insight to this than I do, uh, Saquon Barkley and the Giants were close on a three year deal. I think that's probably the right number. So it, it only makes sense if you're going to pay that valuation, which I think is reasonable for, for Barkley, a team captain, a guy that, that's, that's carrying a huge amount of water for your offense, you're going to use him in a lot of ways. Challenge then should be on the coach, whereas it, it kind of seems to want to be flipped around. You know, I need guys to come in and play my system, which incidentally is really why Bell uh, was, was out mm -hmm. in New York. It was the addition of Adam Gase and all of his success and genius in the NFL. Um, he didn't want to utilize a, a three-down running back. He didn't want to utilize a running back in the passing game. I don't see why you can't do that. And if you're doing that from that perspective, um, wanting to pay him 
the difference between 10 million and 13 million it, it's it's not significant in the long term on a three-year deal this is a player that you know what maybe you have to pay for one year to take the, the last two years of his prime i don't think that's such a big risk for a player like saquon barley that's right. just me but for for me the challenge is okay brian dable in my my opinion one of the two or three best offensive minds in the game clearly showed to be up to the task of, of being the head coach of the team last year figure out a way to make hay with saquon barkley you're getting paid 12 million dollars a year i really think that's a challenge you should embrace make it happen now he's going to be out training camp there's no way you could expect him to go to training camp now he right. might not play during the season and for what three million dollars on a contract that you're not you know given guaranteed the first two years i you know third year let's see what happens but three million dollars over three years but nine million total you might not have to pay the last three i don't think that's significant enough to merit all of this and the reason i say that is because you can be efficient as an offense if you have the threat of a guy like that in the backfield. So you don't have to give him the ball that much. He needs to be there and he needs to get it often enough that teams are going to be afraid of it. So the right type of player, which I feel Barkley is, uh, that makes sense. I, I, it's silly. You know, from what I heard, the, the difference in, in dollars on each side, I think it's silly. I don't want to hear about how much money they too. paid the quarterback. You know the right. situation you were in. You should have been able to make that work. I always look at production. I need yards. I need touchdowns. So just from the rushing point of view, we know Barkley's an effective receiver. So we'll keep it on Saquon. Barkley is more um, offensively efficient than Josh Jacobs or Tony Pollard, yep. right, because of the receiving part of it. Uh, if I'm seeing 1,300 yards rushing from scrimmage and 10 touchdowns, and then, what, six, I don't know how many receptions he had last year. I mean, he's got between almost 2,000 yards in production. Isn't that what I'm looking for, yards and touchdowns? And to suggest that a rookie can just step on the field and know all of that now, I think where this is all going, we're going to get to a point where – while we feasted on that over the last decade, two decades, the, the increase of the passing game, more running backs at the college level got more exposure. They were playing more. Uh, they, they, they learned more things. They're not going to get as much out of the backfield in a, 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 a pro-style offense. They're not going to have that much experience coming into the NFL. So you're not going to be able to just plug them in which is, you know, the, the natural thought. Everybody feels that that's what's going to happen. That's what you can do. And it, that stands in the way of my point of Harris versus Warren. But right. it's not that simple. Saquon Barkley is noticeably better than both of those two players, okay? Somebody's going to need to get paid, all right? I, and that, that's not just to suggest uh, Josh Jacobs doesn't deserve it. Jonathan Taylor is going to be in the same soup next year. Uh, it, it's not that these guys don't deserve it. What I would say is, uh, really, for Barkley, this is the biggest failure of the Giants more than anything. If you don't want to pay him market value today plus four years of inflation or whatever else, if you are not interested in paying the player that, do not draft him in the first round. It's that simple. You should have made this decision four years ago. What has yes. Saquon Barkley done to not validate the faith that you put in him when he took him that high? I, nothing. Absolutely nothing. He's going to be there. Maybe he only lasts another three years, but is that that big of a deal? I, I don't see the problem with it. So it, to, to, to turn face now, and yes, to be fair, there's a different front office in charge, but to turn sure. face now after you've set this up, after you've built it um, on one of the most explosive offensive players in the game, I, I don't. you're not saving anything. You're not bringing in any value. Your team got worse because of this. All for, you know, respect money, not, you know, back-breaking money. You're, you're able to pay that. It makes sense. Um, you, you signed a dominant defensive player that you should have. You signed a quarterback. I feel that you gave him market-level extension, which you should have. There's yep. no reason why Barkley should be playing on the tag, in my opinion. You, you can pay all three of these guys. But then, you know, again, it goes back. You talk about the group text or whatever it is among running backs uh, they know now that they are fighting for their financial well-being here because the position and I firmly believe it's because of analytics 
I mean, and also here's another part to it. The Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl with Isaiah Pacheco and Nathan McKinnon as their two primary running backs. Neither one are top shelf, but they had Patrick Mahomes. I, sometimes, I, sometimes I feel like stuff like that does enter into the thought process. And Bill Walsh, by the way, had Roger Craig. Yeah, Bill Walsh was the, the king of uh, utilizing the running back in a horizontal game. And that that's, that's McKinnon defined. That's been his career. He's been effective for four different teams doing that. Yeah, um, sure it, is. It, the irony of, of the, the group text is, like, you guys aren't the ones that should be having that. It should be the ones in college. You're not yep. going to be able to make a stand and force them to call you a wide receiver. None of that is going to work, okay? It, it's That's a union issue if you want to bring that up. Good luck. It's probably not going to work because, frankly, the quarterbacks want the tag. Lamar Jackson got paid because of the tag. Yep. Um, teams cannot take on that, that big of a cap hit. It's the only position they can do that with. They're not changing the rules to the detriment of the quarterback. Um, it, it, you can find veteran journeyman players. Dalvin Cook is still unsigned. I feel he can still be a successful player. Saquon Barkley probably would get something around the franchise tag amount uh, mm-hmm. on an extension elsewhere. But starting over um, at, at this point in his career, starting over the Giants this late in the season, it's a mistake for both sides. Analytics can, can only tell you so much of what's going on in the field. What about the locker room? What yeah. about the things that it's not tracking? knowing how to pick up a blitz, knowing exactly where your quarterback wants mm-hmm. to go with the ball, um, being able to run a, a, a very underrated part of Saquon Barkley. There's not an offensive scheme he can't run. Okay, He's a brilliant outside zone rider, runner. And he might be a better inside zone runner. He can run stretch. He can run power. You can do anything with a guy like that. If it eliminates a, a, the need for a position or two, you can kind of cut that off of its salary. Uh, the value in the passing game that's where analytics really should show you that an outlet receiver, a big play receiver, a guy that can can you know it, create negative matchups for a defense. There's value to all of that. It, it might not come out necessarily in the numbers, but unless you're looking at it, the, the value of third and eight is exponentially higher than an eight yard reception is. But an eight yard reception is not going to look good on on a stat sheet. A guy like Barkley can catch that at three and make five more out of it. How do, the Giants just beat the Vikings uh, when Kirk Cousins is roasted for throwing the ball, the only place he could have thrown the ball in that situation. What if that's mm-hmm. Barkley? Barkley has a much better chance to outrun a linebacker, to put it mildly. Yep. You have yep. that weapon. You have that short space uh, player that can make somebody miss and go much further. Analytics won't show that as clearly. And if you want to be a slave to analytics, okay, I'm an analytics guy. I, I believe in data. Um, but you cannot exist in a vacuum of film or of data. They need to be married together and you need to look at both of them. I, I just think reasonably speaking, 12 and a half to $13 million a season uh, over three years mm-hmm. is really not that big of a deal. Um, that, that's kind of the going rate for the high-end running back now. Vikings got a lot of hay out of uh, uh, Dalvin mm-hmm. Cook. They did yep. well with him. Wasn't going to last longer than that. That's kind of the nature of the position. That's a separate problem, though. You could set him up for, for a, a, a shorter deal, given the money that he's earned, given the respect that he's earned, and let him be a leader for your team. If he's not the absolute top offensive guy for you know the next 34 games, all right, but everything you know today is that he's probably going to be, and that's the right move to make. I will close this with data. Simple data. Daniel Jones, what does Saquon Barkley mean to him? This is from CBSSports.com. Without without Saquon Barkley, Daniel Jones has 16 touchdown passes and 17 interceptions. 6.2 6.2 yards per attempt, passer rating 77. With Saquon Barkley, 44 touchdown passes, 17 interceptions, 6.9 yards per attempt, 91.4 passer rating. I think the running back helps the quarterback. Okay. That's Always. Basically the difference between a, 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 a high contract player and Mitchell Trubisky. 
you know, that, that decision makes itself right there, in my opinion. Tuesdays are always better with Neil. Thank you, sir. Definitely. Thanks for having me, guys.